So, let's do another review. Hi there, this is Sam with Second Tier Sound. Really nice to see you here. I create videos on how to compose a lot easier in a DAW. If that interests you, perhaps subscribe. So, Heliosity, well known for their high quality content libraries geared towards hybrid composing and film scoring. Uh, perhaps you know the library Damage and Damage 2 recently created a library geared towards guitars, acoustic guitars specifically. And that really piqued my interest since guitar is one of my favorite instruments. So I reached out to them and they were very kind, responded really quickly and gave me a review copy. So let's look at their new library. Scoring Acoustic Guitars by Heaviosity. So what do you get? Well, when you open up, you are greeted by six different folders, all based on guitar sounds. Let's briefly look at the sounds you get. Let's start with A minor acoustic guitar scapes. Then we have the melodic pulses and phrases. Then we have some pads. Then we have some performance palettes. Then we have some rhythmic harmonies. And then lastly, rhythmic pedals. Okay, let's just briefly go over the interface. The first time you open it up, it might be a little bit overwhelming. There's a lot of information on this little screen. But after a while, it becomes clear and all the patches pretty much use the same interface. Heaviosity is just trying to give you as much power as possible at this little window. But the first thing you notice is this big number here in the middle, and that is controlling their distortion, or I would say even volume. So you can do that with a mouse, but it's much better if you control it with a fader. So I'm going to do that, and you're going to see how it works. It might not have been totally obvious, but it's raising the volume because it's adding more distortion to the sound, which is a nice effect. Here you have a twist, which you have to make sure it's on first. And I'm going to add a fader to this one as well. There we go. And this sounds like that.
And this is a very quick way to add some variation to the sounds. On the left side, you have basically reverb with a few different controls, chorus, delay, and distortion. So that gives you more options in changing the sound. On the right side, you have attack, decay, suspension, and release, which will give you more control on how the samples are handled. And down here, you have velocity and union, giving you more control of the velocity. And unison is a kind of detune effect. Then you have EQ filter, which is quite self-explanatory. TFX, I will talk more about later, but it's basically different effects that you can add with key switches. And then motion, a sort of uh, sequencer step input where you can manipulate the sound quite a bit. Okay, but let's look a little bit at how these sounds are built, how they are supposed to be used and the thought behind them. If we look at this guitar scape, which is basically an instant build of atmosphere, very useful for media composing and film composing. And this one, I would say it's a great patch to just build up an atmosphere, as I showed before, just by hitting different keys here, because they're all in A minor, this one here. Then you can build an evolving pad that just goes on forever by hitting different keys. And what they've done also is that they have followed the frequencies, you could say. So these are more bass frequencies and these are more higher frequencies. So you can choose that if you want a higher sound or more bassy or just build them all together. And then you can change that with these keys here on the left side. The one that's highlighted is the one that's used, which is A minor, but I could change it to another key. I don't think these patches do very well uh, by changing the harmony, not at least just like that. You know, it's up to you. But most of the time when you create sort of an atmosphere, you tend to stay in the same key. But the time stretching works fairly well here anyway. Okay, now, here you have just all the different kind of pads in A minor, but maybe you wanna use one of them more extensively. Then you can look at the sample here and you will see which one is used. So if I hit this key, I will see that it's Acoustic Guitarscape 08. Here I can obviously manipulate it by uh, changing the tune, pan, level, start, and random. Random basically means when it loops again, it will be a little bit different each time. And here I can even change the start position where the sample's gonna restart again. Let's say I like Acoustic Guitarscape 08. Then I can go into the folder and find that particular sample and just load that one. Now I can hit any key and it will actually follow the piano. So I can play my own chords here if I would like to. Now I would say these guitar escapes, they sound the best on their own, but at least you have more option to create chords and you have all the keys at your disposal. That's pretty much how it works. You have A minor and E minor, just because then you don't have to use so much time stretching in the contact. It works pretty well, but if you're gonna stretch almost an octave down or a seven at least from A minor, it might sound a bit weird, so you have the option of use the E minor samples instead. And that's pretty much the guitar scapes. Let's look at the next folder, which in this case is melodic pulses and phrases. And I've loaded up an E minor and nylon phrase menu. And you heard it a little bit before by hitting different keys, you get very nice phrases. And all these samples are synced to my DAW basically. So if I speed up that tempo or lower it down, then the samples will follow that tempo beautifully. They are synced to the time, but not to the grid. So that means I can start these samples on different times and sort of get different rhythmical effects. So if I do, instead of starting these two at the same time, I could start them on different times. which gives me quite a bit of variation. So this phrase menu 
in E minor in this case. There's one here in A minor as well. They are very good. This will give you the sort of, these are the samples as they are. Nothing has been done to them. And you can sort of get an idea which one you want to use. And uh, I mean, these work perfectly, these phrase menus, they're a great start. But if you want to sort of have a little bit more control, then you can always try, for example, uh, we can try this one, nylon steel pulses forward, it says. That means that now these things are being looped. So as long as I hold down the key, it's going to play. And that's a very quick way of creating a groove or, or an atmosphere. Forward means that it's, the sample is moving forward. It's the normal kind. FX is the same thing here. It's the same patch, but with effects added onto it. So and reverse is the same, but reverse basically. And so on. And the A minor samples work the same way. But if you want to be more specific, again, you can always check the samples, which one is being used. And then you can go in here and select just that one, for example. There you go. And you see here they are marking this uh, note because it means that the sample is based. It's recorded in A minor. So that's the original one. And then you can try the different ones here. So you have a little bit more control of changing just that sample right there. But that's pretty much it for the melodic pulses and phrases. Let's try the pads. And pads is not divided into A minor and E minor. It's basically more like a synth. So when you open it up, it will look like this. You will have complex pad elements, pad elements menu. Let's look a little bit at what that all means. I'm going to start with the pad elements, which has a bunch of different pads all in the same key loaded. So you can sort of create your pad by hitting different keys. Very straightforward. And then you can change the key here by hitting these keys. But you can also go into complex, which is basically a patch that consists of three sounds put together. And uh, this is not something you can change. It's already made that way. You can change the volume, some modulation, uh, if it's on and on, randomization, start and panning. But it's just a bigger pad that consists of several other pads. So for example, And more or less, this one they have divided it. So the bassier pad is here on the left side, this pad here in the middle, and then you have a little higher sound up there. So they have 10 sort of pre-made patches like this, and they're very useful. And if you want to have a little bit more control yourself, you can always look at the name, for example, in the clouds, and you can go into pad elements, and you can see in the clouds here, channel one. So that's the first one, channel two, in the clouds is the second sound and third in the clouds down here. So you can load just that sound if you want. They also have pad elements short, and that's basically sounds that have, you know, shorter samples, which make them a little bit more melodic. So. So you could do chords, for example. So I would say the, the element short is just more melodic. And that's pretty much the pads. Let's look at performance patches. And this is quite fun. Uh, here they basically have patches consisting of several sounds. So let's look at the E minor steel pulses pedal. So what they have in the middle here is, for example, a pulse. And this pulse I can change because it's just one note. So I can change the key, so to speak.
And that works really well as a bass note. And then on my left side and on my right side are different phrases that I can play on top. So for example, like this. More or less. So you can quite quickly, if you have a little bit more awareness of what the different keys do, you can create quite interesting rhythms or atmosphere quite fast that way. And they work pretty much the same. This one that has the palette, it gives you just all the sounds that are. And then as before, you have the reverse one and effects. So you have a little bit more uh, options there. I do want to say that the reverse, obviously, you don't have control over, but the FX is, I think, is the same as the effects at, that exist here. It's just that they, you know, done them for you, so you don't have to mess about, you don't have to change every time. So it's a little bit quicker, basically. All right. And that's pretty much the performance palettes. So let's look at the rhythmic harmonies. So these are sets of... Uh, different patterns uh, from guitar and in this case you actually do have access to both major and minor by seeing the colors here so if you hit one here it's major and minor up here in the blue Yeah, it's pretty straightforward. just want to add there that it's difficult to do samples right. I mean, this is basically a machine that plays samples up and down. And when you lift the key, the samples stop. And that can be very abrupt. So they have a few tricks there. And I'm not saying they're tricking you. It's just, this is a smart way to do it. You have the delay in here. And they worked a little bit with the release so that it becomes a fairly straight transition between the samples. But I've noticed that don't do a legato here. Uh, have a little bit of pause, a very tiny one, between the keys. Then it sounds a little bit better. So works a little bit better. If you have a perfect legato, then you get a little bit from the previous sample and it doesn't sound as good. But that's pretty much it. These are very nice uh, samples that you could use as a supporting uh, role in the background. Okay. Let's look at the last one, the rhythmic pedals. And uh, this is something I really enjoy. It's very simple, and when you hear it, you might not think much of it. It's just sort of a rhythmic, simple pattern. But I love this because it's so useful. I mean, I write music for dance, I write for music and media, and sometimes you just want that rhythm going on in the background. And you can use drums, and but guitars are really, really good for this. And I used to program that myself, and it's a pain to do. And this is really nice to have. You just hit a key and get that you know, rhythm in the background. And it's not something that you need to hear that well, but it's still very high-quality sample, so it sounds very realistic. Well, I can actually add one more thing here, I forgot. Like almost all of them have sort of a menu or a palette, which gives you the different sounds that exist. But then if you, you know, like a specific one, as I said before, you can always go into single patch and load just that one. And depends a little bit which one you're using, but you can sort of create chords with this. And, you know, it works fairly well. Okay, so let's look a little bit at the interface one more time the more advanced features and this is something that is very important and if you worked with heavy acid before you might be familiar with this concept these samples are very good and uh, well recorded and high quality but if you're just going to use them straight up and not bake them into anything else chances are you're going to sound like anyone else that used this library and that's not very good so you need to be able to tweak them easily in many ways and so Heavy Aussie has a few options here. You know, first the EQ and equalizer and filters here, but then they also have the different effects that you can trigger. I'm gonna 
click here with the key switches. So if I hold in this sound here, and then I'm gonna trigger the sound up here with my keyboard. Distortion or lo-fi filter panner and delay. Now, maybe that wasn't the best sound to use, but I hope you get the idea. And this is very useful. So you can create instant effects, which is very nice, but also variety. And then you can always mess with them how much you want here with these simple controls. But even more so, you can go in advanced of each of these. And this is sort of a, what should I call it? A step input, a sequencer, where you can just draw in any pattern you like or go random. Uh, let's just do random on both and see what happens with the distortion on this one. Yeah, so that was just a random one, but you can actually design a lot here, which is very nice, okay? And then they have a similar idea here with motion, where you can go much more advanced and control all kinds of things like velocity, pan, and pitch, and sort of make your sound even more advanced and more varied. So let's just browse one. So it goes a little quicker. Let's go to complex, rhythmic, and... Let's try this. And you have a lot of options here. Uh, as I said before, the volume, pan, the pitch, you can also change the range and the smoothness, and you can just even you know click these buttons if you wanna create something fast or random as well. And you can have a lot of different uh, screens and you can, you know, how many you want included, if you want them chained or followed. There's quite a lot of design. And that's pretty much it. And uh, first of all, I'm going to say I really like this uh, library. You know, it's not a normal guitar library that you load up and you play the guitar, uh, like uh, some of these here from Native Instrument, for example. It's not that kind of library, but I think Heaviosity really knows what they're doing. And this is very useful if you're a media composer. Uh, it's very nice to have those sort of pulses and pads in the background and you can quickly create really nice work with them. So for me, this is uh, excellent and I'm going to look into their electrical guitars as well. I haven't actually, but when I saw they have an acoustic one, I'm like, yeah, this I want to check out because I'm more interested in that sort of acoustic sound. But Heaviosity is really good at creating this hybrid sound and a lot of their libraries work similarly. Damage, for example, you have a menu of different drums and then you can also load the ones you want to work more with. So yes, this works really well for me. It's a high quality sound and it, it's easy to work with and you have a lot of flexibilities. But I do have some nitpicks anyway. And the first one is, why is there no expression and dynamics included by default? Well. If you hit the keys differently, you know, if you hit them soft, you get a soft sound. If you hit them hard, you get a harder sound. And that's great. But I really would like to have a volume knob in here. And some of them might say, well, you have one here, right? Or you can use your jaw. Yeah, that is true. But it's, unless you work with this stuff, you, you don't really know what I'm talking about. It's just a preference of working. Most libraries have an expression control that you can sort of use, and then you can have a more dynamic arc or your sounds can be, be swelling, so to speak. So if I, you know, have... And that works fairly well using the Punisher, but then of course you always have the distortion in there, which I don't mind, but it would be nice to be able to use my own volume swells and did picking, but yes. Another one that I find a little bit tricky is that in these samples where you have several instruments at the same time, we can just load several patches. Now, why can't I load the ones I want myself? They're all accessible in different folders. They all exist. I know which ones they are, but why can't I just say, no, I want this sound here. I want this sound here. And I want this to use these keys. I don't see how that would be very difficult it gives me more control. So I don't really understand that there's quite a few patches here. They're just made for you. You can uh, change the panning and the volume and so on, but you can change the sounds. And that's strange to me. 
And one nitpick also is that I feel like this is not enough. It's it's bare bones. It's a missing quite of samples. Now, I really like the quality. I really like the pads, but it's just not that many. You can't change the sounds and you don't get a lot of options, except, you know, the typical effect options that all libraries already have. So that's not really groundbreaking. It's just, you know, quite few sounds, really. If you look at rhythmic harmonies, it's just three nylon and three steel. It's not a lot. And uh, if you look at the pads, basically you have 10 pads. I know they consist of other ones, but if you look at it that way, it's just 10 pads. And yes, you can do a lot with them, but it's, it's bare bones. And I think for $99, which is not a lot of money for a library, really, it's, it's a little bit poor. I do want to say again, I think it's very high quality and Heaviosity usually have very good libraries all over. Uh, all of the libraries are, are very well made, but this just seems like it's not enough. And that makes, for me, it makes it a little bit expensive for what you get. But otherwise, it's definitely a recommend that will create very nice atmospheres. And if you like this acoustic ones, then you should probably look into the electric guitar as well. That's it for this review. Despite me having some small issues with this library, I still highly recommend it. You can get great results with it. If you're interested in it, then just click the link below or just go to their webpage yourself. So, if you like these kind of videos and want to support me further, then you can always subscribe, hit the like button, and perhaps even join my Patreon as well. But until next time, this is Sam signing out. Take care.